Hello everyone, I am going to be talking to you today all about the World Wide Web. If you're watching this video right now, almost certainly you are accessing it through this World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is this incredible project that humanity has built over the last 30 years that connects all sorts of um, amazing informational resources, and in some cases not so amazing informational resources, all together in a giant web of information and programs and um, systems together across the world. So we will be discussing that in this module. So for the 0% of you that are not familiar with the World Wide Web, um, at its basic core, it is, um, as the name implies, a web. So what we have here is the very first website ever created that kind of talks about the World Wide Web. And at its basic core, especially when it was first created, and continues to be just in a more complicated way today, uh, we have several pages with information, and on these informational pages, we have these, um, what is known as hypertext. We have this information with hypertext embedded in it that allows you to access other bits of information. So as a demonstration of this, um, if we have this web page here, and we go and we click on this word subjects here, which we can see highlighted in blue in our web browser, which in this case, we're using a web browser to access the World Wide Web, though, as we'll discuss later, you don't necessarily need to use a web browser in order to access the World Wide Web. Um, we click on, say, subjects in our web browser, and it brings us to a different bit of information. It's kind of forming a web. It's We've connected this word subjects, and it's brought us to a different page of information that discusses a bunch of other things. And it has hypertext and connects out to other things as well. So for instance, we might click on languages, and this brings us to a different page. And we do not have to just keep going in this linear fashion. We can go back to our original page, and we can click on history. And history takes us to a different page. So you can see here that we're building this web of information. And again, that's why it's called the World Wide Web. It is a bunch of information distributed across the world with this hypertext um, conveying information and connecting that information to other information. Um, OK, so how is it created? Well, it was created in um, originally in 1989 was the first proposal created. And it was created by Sir Tim Berners-Lee at CERN. So he was interested in this concept of basically we have a bunch of scientists at the CERN laboratory and they are documenting all sorts of uh, various bits of information and he envisioned this higher order system in which these bits of information could be connected to one another um, where we wouldn't just need a specific scientist information being isolated and then you kind of have to figure out how to get to this other scientist information and then figure out how to get to this other scientist information. And instead what we have is this hypertext that has information but also describes ways of getting to other information. So you can kind of navigate this higher order information system um, distributed across all sorts of systems and not be just relegated to looking at one person's information than another person's. It's that you, this is all linked together is kind of the critical idea here. It builds up this complex system, this higher order system where information can be connected to one another. Um, and now, as we all know, as, as I said, almost certainly you are watching this through the World Wide Web. Almost certainly you interact with the World Wide Web on a daily basis at this point in society. Um, there's a lot of websites. So it was first created, uh, the very first website actually was launched in 1991, though the proposal for it was in 1989. Um, the number of websites has dramatically expanded since 1991 when that first website that we were previously looking at launched. Um, all sorts of services and websites have been created and at this point, 30 years later, 30 plus years later even, um, we're at nearly 2 billion websites. So uh, we've built this information system over the last 30 years that effectively conveys almost all of humanity's knowledge in some form or another, and then all sorts of other services, I'm sure, like, you know, in this case, we're looking at Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Google, all these other services that launched on top of the World Wide Web. And they all have different purposes, you know, for instance, searching for information, the ability to search for videos, the ability to search for photos, to con uh, connect with people, etc. 
All of these services are built on top of the World Wide Web, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, so how does this work? What does it mean to say that all of these uh, websites are out there, that we have this distributed higher order system connecting all this information together? How does that work? Um, well, the way it works is that all of these uh, distributed systems are all speaking a universal language. They're all talking this web protocol, hence the name Talking Web, uh, the name of this module. Um, and the, the standardized protocol is what enables one system to know how to reach out to another system somewhere else on the internet and access a resource to collect it. So in this case, we're kind of demonstrating, hey, uh, maybe I'm going to some website to, to get a nice picture of a cat. Um, so my, I type into my browser, you know, give me, give me, I'm going to this website that has a cat. So it's going to go and it's going to go out to the internet and go specifically to some target web server that is hosting this resource. And it is going to talk HTTP. It is going to, your, your browser is going to translate your request for this cat picture into a standardized protocol, a standardized language this remote system on the internet is also speaking and it's going to understand what you're looking for in doing so. So in this case, and we'll get into this in the later videos in this uh, series, uh, we're requesting this cat.gif uh, image. And when we make this request out to this remote server, it responds to us. It says, okay, and then it passes along the image to you. So this is how we're able to kind of be on our system and talk to some remote system and ask for in this case, a cat, and the cat picture comes back. This static uh, resource of a cat. Wonderful, wonderful use case of the internet, of course. Um, but web services, web applications, uh, these servers, the critical thing to realize is that they're all just speaking a standardized language. And it doesn't have to be just very simple use cases of getting a picture of a cat. We can have more dynamic requests. So here's a slightly more sophisticated thing. Our system might go and fetch out to another system and basically ask it for, hey, what's the time? And I'm going to say, I want this for the time zone of UTC. Um, well, the time is an evolving resource, right? It's, uh, it's not always the same time. It's not just a static thing. This remote web server can actually start doing computation to uh, return some result and do dynamic requests, dynamic responses. Um, and it might respond, hey, you know, the year is 2038, it's January 19th, 3 a.m., 14th minute, 7th second, okay? Here's, here's your response to you. And every time we fetch that, you know, it might give us a different time because, you know, time is an evolving resource. The critical thing, though, is that we're speaking HTTP. These systems are talking to one another over the Internet and the World Wide Web living on top of the Internet, uh, speaking this universal language of HTTP. And in order to understand this barrier between my system and another system, because all these web servers are is just another system, right? I have my computer, I have my laptop, my phone, and I want to make a request to some remote thing somewhere else in the world. Um, in order to do that, we need to speak a standard language. It needs to know what I'm asking for. It needs to be able to understand my request. So. As humans, you know, normally interacting with the World Wide Web, right? We're not speaking HTTP. We're speaking, um, effectively what we're speaking is clicks on a web page, taps on a web page, give me the next video, uh, let me post this video to Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, but your browser is acting on your behalf because your browser is sitting on your system. It's able to translate these clicks and generate HTTP requests in order to speak HTTP to this remote server and service the request. So that remote server understands what it is that you're asking for and can bring back the result. Um, so this is kind of the barrier between two systems is this HTTP protocol, this HTTP language. And in order to understand how the World Wide Web really truly works, we need to understand the language that it is speaking. And that is what we are going to convey and discuss in the remainder of this series.